Okay, so what are the lipids and their roles? So the, the three types of lipids that we need to know about are triglycerides, phospholipids, and finally, cholesterol, which is an example of the sterols family of molecules. The point of these videos is to focus on the most essential things, and if we're looking at the most essential things, we have no choice, literally no room for manoeuvre on whether we need to know this or not. We absolutely need to know this, and therefore I'm asking you to practice um, producing this information by yourself. Okay, so we want to get away from just looking at this material again and again. We want to be creating this material again and again. And my hope is that if I give you the questions that you keep coming back to and, and, and keep practicing, that you'll get better at being able to reproduce the information. So triglycerides, what are the lipids and their roles? What's the, what's the, what are the functions of triglycerides? Well, the function of triglycerides is essentially as an energy store, okay? Um, triglycerides can be used for aerobic respiration. So we, we, th we tend to think as glucose as the main respiratory substrate, but um, our long-term storage, so glucose is an immediate um, source of energy for res or, or source of fuel for respiration, but over the longer term, we use fats as our energy store, and these are the triglycerides, okay? Now, these triglycerides also have other functions. So they are um, thermal insulators. Thermal insulation. So it's kind of retaining, it's helping the organism to retain its, the, the heat generated by metabolic activities, keeping it in the body to keep that body temperature as close to optimum as possible. Okay. Um, also, and this might be like a secondary function, but it is a physical insulator as well, protection for organs. Okay, so our fat stores are, if you, if you look at where they are in the body, they are located around, you know, our organs, protecting them from um, impact damage. Okay, right, so that's our triglycerides, and that's their functions. Let's move on to the phospholipids. The phospholipids, their main function is to form membranes. Okay, and remember, from our work on organelles, the functions of membranes is basically to compartmentalize, okay? Have an organelle, and because the membrane is uh, in, you know, making a barrier, right, because the membrane forms a barrier to the free movement of many things, you can control the, what comes in and what goes out, and therefore you can control what's inside the membrane. So that you know, the cell can control what's inside the cell, and even inside the cell, the organelles can have their own little mini environments inside, making those inside environments optimum for the, for the function of that organelle. Okay, finally, we have cholesterol. Now, cholesterol is also an important component of membranes, and when we get into looking at membranes in detail, we'll come back to cholesterol on that one. Um, but cholesterol also forms the basis of many steroid hormones. Okay, so in terms of hormones, uh, some hormones are based on proteins, but other hormones are based on cholesterol. Okay. All right. Uh, and actually, the phospholipids as membranes, uh, I'm just going to quickly just have a quick thought. Um, they also provide electrical insulation, electrical insulation. So there'll be more connection to that in year two when we look at the nervous system and how the speed of the impulse is increased. Um, and just like a wire has to be insulated by the plastic coating around it, um, the, the neurons are also insulated by cells and those cells provide the insulation because of their many layers of phospholipid. Okay, so these are the main things in terms of lipids that we need to be aware of. Okay, um, these things pop up time, from time to time in biology, and we need to link them back to the, to, the, to the molecules whose job it is to provide these functions. Okay, now let's look at the structure. Structure, let's get into structure then. We'll look at the basic triglyceride first. What's the structure of a triglyceride? It's got three components. Okay, it's got three components. One component is glycerol. 
Okay, now glycerol is a hydrocarbon, okay, but it has OH groups. It has three OH groups. Fatty acids, the acid component of their name comes because they have a carboxylic acid group at one end and a long hydrocarbon chain on the other end, hydrocarbon tail. Okay, what happens is uh, a condensation reaction utilizes or brings together these atoms, okay, the OH of the glycerol and a hydrogen of the fatty acid group right there. And as they come together, yes, just like normal, just like with the other condensation reactions, a water molecule is formed as those atoms come away. And what happens is that an oxygen then forms a bridge between the glycerol and the fatty acid. Okay, now this bond is called an ester, an ester bond. So the glycerol connects to the fatty acid via an ester bond and a water molecule is produced. And this happens on the other OH groups too. Okay, and I'll, shall I just, okay. So what we end up with is three fatty acids connected to a glycerol, and that is the structure of our triglyceride, okay? It is mostly, it is hydrophobic, okay? Pretty much all over. All right, so in that process, we make three water molecules and we'd get three, triglycer uh, three fatty acids joined to the glycerol, and that is our triglyceride. And its job essentially is to store these, okay? This is, these are our hydrocarbon tails. There's gonna be carbon joined to carbon, joined to carbon with hydrogens branching off, okay? And when we looked at glucose, we said that glucose, one, the way that glucose's structure was connected to its function, was that it had carbon-hydrogen bonds. And those carbon-hydrogen bonds could be broken during respiration to release the energy. Well, we've got an abundance of carbon-hydrogen bonds right here in these hydrocarbon tails. Okay, so similarly, these hydrocarbons can also be used in respiration. These carbon-hydrogen bonds can be broken to provide the energy to produce ATP ultimately. Okay, um, and there we have it. So the purpose of this molecule is to store these, uh, uh, or is, it, is to be a chemical, is a store of this chemical energy that's stored in the carbon-hydrogen bonds, okay? So that's essentially how the function, or, or how the structure of this molecule connects to its function. Okay, right, so that's our triglyceride. I guess the other thing we should talk about next is phospholipids. So while this is triglycerides, phospholipids are a modification of this. Phospholipids um, have a glycerol, yes. Yes, they have, they are joined by an ester bond, and that's still there. Condensation reactions, ester bonds, okay. Uh, this is also a fatty acid. Um, However, phospholipids are connected to two fatty acids, but at the third position, they have a phosphate, a phosphate group. And a phosphate group is made up of phosphorus and oxygen, and it is negatively charged, okay? So while this molecule was pretty much hydrophobic all over, Phospholipids have a dual um, personality, so to speak, okay? Um, they have a polar side, a charged side, and they have this hydrophobic side as well. So, so this part is, so this part, okay? This part is hydrophilic, and this part is hydrophobic. Okay, which means that in an aqueous environment, they have the ability to form bilayers, okay? Bilayer in water, 
okay, or in an aqueous environment. And cytoplasm and plasma and tissue fluid, they all count as these aqueous environments. Okay, so, right, and they, they form this bilayer which has the phosphate head interacting with the water particles, okay, and it has these fatty acids which are hydrophobic and they are facing away from the water, repelled by the water, and interacting with the other fatty acid tails and this forms a barrier. This forms a barrier to movement. So you can see how the phospholipid structure is perfectly in line with its function as, as forming membranes and forming barriers to movement. Okay, and compartmentalization. So a bilayer in water forms membranes. Okay, right, and that takes us to our last bit of structural discussion in relation to triglycerides and phospholipids, which is the nature of the nature of fatty acids. So while we have these triglycerides and these phospholipids and they both have these fatty acids, fatty acids can vary in, in their structure as well. So if you've got a fatty acid, right, it's got a carbon, oxygen, and OH carboxylic acid at one end, fatty acids can be either saturated right, which means they have a long, pretty much straight um, hydrocarbon tail, but they can, so this is saturated. But they can also be unsaturated, and unsaturated means they have the fatty acid, they have the carboxylic acid group, but as part of their hydrocarbon chain, there is also a double bond between the, uh, one of the carbons or two of the carbons in the chain, which causes the chain to bend, okay? Which causes the chain to bend. And because these chains are bent, the fatty acids cannot pack, or the lipids cannot pack as close together, all right? So this is unsaturated, okay? So because these chains are bent, um, it prevents the triglycerides from, or, or the phospholipids from packing together so closely, and it affects the properties Okay, so these tend to be more present in oils because they're liquid at room temperature, because they can't pack as closely together. And the more saturated the, the fatty acids tend to be, the more closely they can pack, the more densely they can pack, and then they tend to be solid at room temperature, which we call fats. All right, so that's the structural discussion of the triglycerides and phospholipids. We'll just have a quick look at cholesterol, and then we'll move on to testing. Okay, this is here. I copied out of a textbook. I have not memorized its structure, okay? Um, but the point is, we are answering the question of how the structure of this molecule is connected to its function, okay? So, uh, what we're just gonna quickly discuss is its role in membranes. So, what, what about its structure lends itself to its role in membranes, okay? And what about its structure uh, lends itself to its role as a lipid hormone, okay? So, in terms of membranes, um, how is it useful? Well, as you can see, um, all of this stuff, all of this part of the molecule is all made of carbon and hydrogen, which means that all of this part, all of this part of the molecule is hydro, hydrophobic. Is hydrophobic, which means it can embed itself into the hydrophobic part with the fatty acid tails in a bilayer. Okay, uh, membranes, yeah, so it can embed itself in amongst the fatty acid tails of a membrane and it can control the fluidity, not control, regulate. It can regulate the fluidity. Okay? It's kind of like a, at, at once it's a glue and at once it's a lubricator. Okay? So when temperatures get too cold it acts as a kind of lubricator and it allows the phospholipids to keep moving and retain their fluidity. Okay? But when the temperatures get too high it acts like a glue and prevents 
the phospholipids from moving around too fast and, and, and making holes in the membrane. Okay, so it can, because of its property, of, because it has this hydrophobic region, it can embed itself into the membrane. Okay, now because, because molecules that are modified from cholesterol will be hydrophobic, it will be easy for those hormones to pass through the cell membrane because they're hydrophobic. The membrane won't be a barrier to them. They can pass into the cell and whatever signal, wh whatever the reason was that the hormone was produced, that signal can then go into the cell to the nucleus and, and result in a response. Okay. Um, last question then, final one, how can we test for the presence of liquids? Okay. So this is the emulsion. The emulsion test. Okay, so what are the steps of the emulsion test? Actually, no, the emulsion test, and remember what, what is the positive result of that? If a lipid is present, what's the positive result of that? It is we have a cloudy white layer, cloudy white layer at the top of the mixture, okay? Right, so what are the steps in order for us to either see that or not see that dependent on the presence of lipids? So the first thing we do, the first step is to add, the first step is to add ethanol, okay? And what that does is, if there's any lipid present, it will mix with the ethanol, okay? Two, add ethanol, mix. Three, what that means is now that if there's any lipid present in your original sample, it should be now dissolved with the ethanol, okay? Because ethanol is an organic solvent. Okay, now, then what we do is we add water. The ethanol will preferentially mix with the water or dissolve in the water. And what that will do is if there's any lipid present at this point, the lipid the lipids will form the emulsion. So as lipids will be forced to form these little globules, because they're no longer dissolved in the ethanol, okay, we will see that as a cloudy white layer forming at the top of the tube, because the lipids have a lower density than the water and ethanol mixture. Okay, and that is lipids. So, um, at this point, have it clear in your mind what the three questions were, okay? Make a quick note of what kind of information is used to answer that question. What is the information that was used to answer that question and what was the information that was used to answer that question? And then go about being able to reproduce the answers to that question. Practice it a couple times today if you can. And then I would advise, you know, it, after a few days when you haven't, you, you know, when you've had a chance to, maybe you've gone over other things, when this is less at the front of your mind, have another go at this. And the act of doing that, the act of creating that information from scratch without help will result in you developing a better memory of this stuff, okay? Remember, if there's anything that I've said here where you, know, you think you didn't understand it, um, I would focus on that. Th this, these exercises are more to develop your recall and your ability to kind of you know, call on this information in a test situation. So if there's anything that you need to work on to understand it, you do need to go away, revise certain things, have a look at them again, but then you need to come back and train yourself to be able to produce this stuff on demand. Okay? All right, guys, this is where I finish. This is where you get to work. Good luck.